Hello, my name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review. Today, I'm going to be covering this book, Skull Sworn. I uh, picked it up a couple months ago at a uh, used bookstore in Las Cruces called Coez. I was there while I was showing some guys some uh, the farmer's market in town as well as the axe throwing and uh, I found this book. It cost six dollars. It's an interesting little fantasy story. Um, I say little, it's not really little. It's 300 pages long. This book was... I don't quite know how else to put it but the opening was intriguing and a lot of the world building at the start was as well. The premise as you read in the prologue and in chapter one, is that the main character by the name of Hyder Lekater is effectively an assassin, but not in a way that she would recognize. She's a acolyte of the cult of the Death God, and she is trying to complete the rite that would install her as a priestess of that god. The trial that Pyre must finish is a riddle slash song. The riddle slash song reads as follows. One who is right and one who is wrong, a singer snared in a web of song. Deliver them, deliver them into his million fingered hands. Deliver to him a dealer of death severed from life shorn of breath deliver a mother ripe with new life find the kindness in the sharpest knife deliver to him a giver of names there are no words in his domain when these are safe inside his hands one more remains one more remains give to the god one who makes your mind and body sing with love who will not come again trial involves her killing those people and it doesn't need to be in any particular order as her um, examiners tell her except that the one that she loves must come last any of the others she can kill in any order the singer the one who is right the one who is wrong the giver of names all of that it does not matter so long as the last one she kills is the one that she loved the conflict is that pyre doesn't know that she's ever really been in love and she thinks there's one person she might be in love with and so the story is her working in a very unique way on making the person she thinks she might develop love for love her the story also revolves around this god of death that she worships and serves and how one of the examiners the priest that is with her accompanying and watching her to make sure she actually does kill people and only kills those people until the trial is over is himself obsessed with finding immortals and pyre chooses to go back to her hometown which allegedly has some living gods in the the marshes that surround her home city he does not believe that immortal things should be immortal this priest claims to have killed a few immortal beings in his lifetime, ones that came before humanity. And so he is, in a way, leading the, the B plot, is he believes that these three gods, these living gods, are immortals of the same kind he has been hunting throughout his life. The third character of the main three is a priestess who, despite being a priestess of the god of death, her desires she acts upon every one of them. Food, wine, dancing, singing, nakedness, open sexuality, all of that, she just exudes desire. But she's also a, a, a killer, uh, effectively an assassin. Those two examiners, the priest and the priestess, those two examiners alternate shifts, and from the time of the first killing by Pyre, she has 14 days to finish her task. And all the while, Pyre is trying to set up and arrange these killings. It's also, in a way, a mystery. How is she going to kill these people? What are they guilty of? Are they guilty of anything? 
how is she going to orchestrate it so that what they are doing fits exactly with what she needs to kill them for? Early on in the book, they kind of set it up as her manipulating it, treating it like a riddle in a way. Uh, the, the city that she is going to can only be accessed by boat or by a very long um, wooden bridge, a causeway, effectively. Her home city is effectively in the delta of a river and the surroundings are like fantasy Australia. Spiders, snakes, crocodiles, bugs, bees, everything is there to kill humanity. Even the fish. Effectively, the only named fish in the area are like tr trout and like piranhas. So all of these creatures are there constantly killing humans. The fact that humans live there, they attest to the strength of their devotion to their gods. And when the causeway gets sabotaged at the start of the book, Pyre kills two people, setting off her trial. And when the examiners point out, I'm not sure why you killed those, you effectively just failed. Pyre sets about the tone of the book, which is that she is going to twist the definition of, the, uh, of that, those lyrics in the trial so that it fits. And so, in this case, a crocodile has its jaws around the foot of one person, and another, his wife, is struggling in the sand. The wife says, uh, just get the crocodile off of you and run away. I'm not going to be able to make it to you. I'm already dead. And the husband says, he's coming, he'll, he'll help her, he'll save her. Pyre then throws a dagger into both of their backs because as she justifies it, one was right, the wife was already dead, nothing could be done to save her, and one was wrong. The husband wasn't going to save her, he was just saying what he could to try and comfort himself and his wife in that moment. And so that kind of sets up the, the tone of how she goes about completing that trial. It has an interesting take on what love is, on how one expresses their love for another, and ultimately, I think the, the uh, because it is a mystery, the twist, which there's always a twist in mysteries, comes out of nowhere, and it's not as satisfying as it could be, but the action surrounding it does feel good, and prologue and epilogue are framed from a first-person narrative as if Pyre is writing a letter to someone, and as you read the book, the identity of who she's writing to isn't really made clear until the end, and it that didn't really feel satisfying either. But it was a fun book to read. I read it in one day off. I woke up at seven like I do every day. I can't wake up later even on my days off. It, it sucks. And I read it all the way until 1 p.m., 2 p.m., something in that ballpark, almost seven, eight hours to read it. But I enjoyed it. I went back and reread it just to see, was this twist really supported in the, the story? And it kind of was, but it didn't really feel satisfying. Um, as far as fantasy goes, it was low or no magic, and so it felt comforting to read a very mundane fantasy world where her actions really impacted things on a, in a big way. In, in my mind, in a lot of fantasy, magic trivializes things, and there was none of that here. All of the action, all of the plot developments happened through the work of the main character, and it was nice to see how hard she tries for that love, how hard she tries to feel good about what she's doing, the inner conflict, the turmoil she has between her principles and her home. It kind of fakes you out in the sense of her faith as well, but ultimately it all comes back to a moderately satisfying ending. You know, the twists, the action, everything thing comes together. I'd reread it. I wouldn't put it at the top of my reread list. I feel like having a fantasy book that isn't like D&D &D related is going to attract more fantasy books to my shelves until eventually I have a lot that are detached from tabletop role-playing games in a satisfying and in a very comforting way. 
this it's like a it's like a magnet, a fantasy magnet. And by having this on my shelf, I'm gonna find other fantasy to enjoy and yeah. I paid six dollars for this book, like I said earlier. I think it was worth the six dollars, but the back price says twenty-five ninety-nine. In Canada, thirty-seven dollars. And I don't know that I would ever pay new price for it. It's a it's a relatively new book. I'm lucky that I found it in a used bookstore and for as cheap as it is. It was published in 2017. Only five years old. The copy I have, very good condition. Yeah, that's about it for this book. My name is Wildstag, and thank you for tuning in to another used book review.